Hey guys, it's Jamin here bringing you another do-it-yourself computer video today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix a smart status bad error. Uh, this error is an early warning error to let you know that your hard drive is failing. Uh, it's designed to kick in before the hard drive fails and give you some time to back up your data. So the correct way to fix this problem is to swap out your hard drive, which I'll show you how to do. And then once you install a new hard drive, you have to reinstall your operating system onto it. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to fix some things in BIOS that will turn this error off. Uh, but keep in mind this error is telling you something. It's telling you your hard drive is failing. So if you just do the BIOS steps and switch the error off, that's not fixing your hard drive and your hard drive most likely will fail in the near future. Only use the trick I'm going to show you if for some reason you know your hard drive is good. Maybe you just put a new one in um, and this error is erroring out itself and giving you this when it shouldn't be. Then you can turn it off. Uh, but generally speaking, you want to fix the problem rather than just shut off the error. Uh, so to start with, I'm going to show you how to swap out a hard drive in this computer and I'll show you that now. So if you're lucky like me, you'll have an easy access panel on the bottom of your computer. What these usually help with is accessing uh, commonly used components like your hard drive and your RAM. Uh, so if you don't have one of these panels, you may have to take off the entire bottom case. Best thing to do in that situation is search for a teardown or disassembly video on your exact model computer. If you can't find one on your exact model, go to the series number, which should be the first set of numbers or, or the model name. If you can't find it at all, keep in mind a few things. They usually hide screws under your battery, sometimes they'll hide them under your DVD drive, and sometimes they'll hide them under your rubber feet. So go slow, take your time, and don't force anything up that's not coming up easily. You probably missed a screw. If you do have a panel like mine, then you're in luck. It saves some time. I'm going to take out these two screws and pop the panel right off. There's my hard drive, there's my RAM. Your hard drive is typically laid out like this. It'll be inside what's called a hard drive caddy. What the caddy does is it holds your hard drive secure, screws into the panel so the hard drive doesn't wobble and come loose. So you undo the screws holding the caddy in, and then I pull the, the caddy away from the port and the hard drive releases. Now, usually hard drives and caddies are held in by two screws on either side. Unscrew those screws and the hard drive comes out. Keep in mind to keep your screws separate when you're doing computer repair. Not all screws are the same length or width as others, and you shouldn't use screws that are set for one purpose for something else. So when you're taking your hard drive out of your caddy, make sure you keep the orientation the same that it went into your computer. Sometimes these caddies are easy to forget how they fit into your hard drive because the hard drive can fit into the caddy any way you want to put it in. But keep it, So when you put your new hard drive in, keep it in the same orientation, screw it in on all four sides, and slide it back into the hard drive the correct way. Make sure that it's secure. If you're looking to upgrade your hard drive, a few things you want to keep track of. You want to get a 2.5 inch for most laptops. That's the size hard drive, 2.5 inch. You also want a SATA connection, S-A-T-A. -A. That's this type of connection that fits into the port in your laptop. Um, as far as the actual size, you can get 500 gigabytes, a terabyte. Um, it may not be a bad idea to upgrade to a solid state drive. There's no movable parts, they last longer, and they're a lot faster, which helps performance. So now that you've installed a new hard drive, remember there's no operating system on it, you have to install one. So you can either purchase install media or you can create your own install media. I've included a link below in the description of where you can get that free from Microsoft so you know it works and I'll show you how to download it in that link. Once you get your install media, I'll show you now how to install Windows 10 onto your computer. To start with, I'm going to hit power and on most Asus laptops you start tapping escape right away. So power, escape right away. Again, sometimes Asus, like other computers, they'll switch it up, what key you use, uh, but it's generally a escape. Now, right here, it'll give you your boot menu or your boot options. Depending on what year computer you have and what model, this could look a little 
different for you, but it, all the information should still be there regardless of, of the presentation. So I'm going to arrow down and choose SanDisk. This is where you want to choose what device to boot off of, your hard drive, uh, flash drive, whatever. So make sure that no other external devices are plugged in, and then I'm, I'm going to choose SanDisk, and I'm going to hit Enter. So this may take a few minutes to boot up. Um, I'll, again, I'll stay with you here through the whole process. Once Windows has installed, um, it, it may prompt you to restart or the install process may start, um, take the USB out because you don't want your computer restarting and then starting the whole process over again because it's booting off of that SanDisk. Um, so just that, as a little word of caution going forward. So this will be the first screen, the first option that pops up for you. Let me zoom in here from now on so you can see the screen a little better. So there's your first option, the language to install, time and currency format, and keyboard layout. So generally speaking, you don't have to change any of that. Hit next, and then install now. So at this process, it asks you for a product key. I generally skip this part. Um, you, you can enter your product key later on, or if it's already installed onto your motherboard, it, it should pull it automatically later. But either way, I, I usually like just skipping this part. Um, so I don't have a product key, click on that. And then if you are using a product key, you want to make sure that it matches what version you're installing. Uh, for example, if your product key is Windows 10 Pro, don't try to install Windows 10 Home and, and also vice versa. Don't try to install Windows 10 Pro if, if you have a home product key. Um, but I'm going to select Windows 10 Home because that's what I'm using. 64-bit, enter. And then you accept the TNCs. Check the box, next, and then we're doing the second option, custom install Windows only advanced. That's the option we're choosing. Now you may see one or two partitions, you may see five or six. The idea here is to delete all the partitions until you're left with unallocated space. So I'm going to click on them one at a time, it doesn't really matter which, hit delete, and then confirm. Asus touchpads tend to jump around when you're installing the operating system, it's kind of annoying. Um, so another partition, delete, confirm, and again you're left with unallocated space. So whether you have to delete several or, or a lot, um, un unallocated space, and then you hit next. Now it starts downloading. This should take a while, make sure your computer's plugged in, um, make sure that your computer won't shut off and lose power during this, then you'll have to start all over again. So again, at this part, I'm going to choose to take out my USB right now because the computer's restarting um, and I don't want it to start back up again and accidentally try to boot off the flash drive again. Okay, my mute button wasn't working for some reason. Uh, so that's Cortana. She'll she'll walk you through this process. All right over here, you select yes for region. Uh, it's asking about your keyboard layout. Select yes. I don't have any reason for another layout, so I'm going to hit skip. Now this connecting you to a Wi-Fi network part. This you'll need to decide for yourself. Uh, most often what will happen here is if you uh, select the Wi-Fi network and you sign in, it will then prompt you very shortly to log into your uh, Microsoft account. Uh, if you have a Microsoft account or you want to make a Microsoft account and, and you want this computer connected to that, then by all means connect to a Wi-Fi and, and proceed forward. Um, I don't like having to make accounts that I don't want to make. Um, so often if you select the Wi-Fi account, 
it, it won't let you skip that next part. You, you'll have to enter a Microsoft account or you'll have to create one. You won't have an option. So to get around that, um, I'm, I'm going to select I don't have internet to skip this spot, uh, continue setup without Wi-Fi, and then it won't prompt me to do that. Um, it, it asks you to confirm, and I'm going to hit continue with limited setup because I don't want to... I don't want to connect to Wi-Fi. I don't want to be prompted for a Microsoft account. Uh, who's going to use this PC? I'll call it ASUS for now because we're just using this for the video. If you want a password, enter it in here. If you don't want a password, hit next. And then again, um, I, I would rather not have, have my activity history on, so I'm going to select no. If you don't care one way or, or another and you want to hit yes, go for it. Um, I, I would rather decline this as well. I pretty much don't like giving people free information. Same thing here. I'm going to uncheck all these boxes. I don't, I don't like giving people location data or diagnostic data. Unless you're going to pay me for my data, um, I'm not going to give it to you for free. So, But again, that's just me. So, Slide down. So I, I unselect all of these. Um, and if nothing else, it, it, it makes the process go faster anyway. And then I hit accept. All right, so now it'll finish setting up. Okay, so now the install process is done. You're at Windows. Uh, you're all set, congratulations, you install Windows. At this point, uh, this is where I prefer to uh, set up Wi-Fi because it won't prompt you for a Microsoft account. Your Wi-Fi is usually down here, that's true. Uh, but it may take a few minutes for everything to get in shape and it may take a few minutes to see it down there. I find it's a lot faster to come down here to your search bar um, and type in Wi-Fi. And again, it's not finding anything. It may take a few minutes to set up. So if it doesn't find anything, backspace it out, try it again. There it is. Wi-Fi system settings. That's what we want. So hit enter. Everything's just getting started, so don't expect your computer to be flying right now. Uh, show available networks. That's what I'm going to click on. And now I'm going to sign in to my Wi-Fi. Okay, so I'm good. So now I have Wi-Fi. So now what you want to do, this is a fresh copy of Windows. Um, there's a lot of security updates, a lot of driver updates, a lot of things that need to go on right now. So come back down here to your search bar. Type in updates, and this will pop up. Check for updates again under system settings. So that's what we want. Hit enter. Now, down below in the description, there'll be a link on how to update your ASUS computer. Um, that'll take you a little more in depth into this process if, if, if you want to view that. But very quickly, this is what you'll do. It, it'll say no updates. Never believe that anytime you're running updates. Always click on this box, check for updates. I'll always run that scan manually. And especially in our case with a fresh install of Windows, there will be a ton of updates that populate. Um, so make sure you just sit here, let them populate, scroll down to the bottom. Sometimes they don't auto start. Sometimes you have to uh, click on download or manually make them start and then keep an eye on it. Um, sometimes it'll prompt you to restart your computer to continue updating, in, in which case do it. But yeah, just keep an eye on the updates, make sure they're all being processed. It, it, it could take several hours for them to all go through. You may have to restart your computer several times. Uh, but yeah, especially with a fresh install, there will be a lot of updates. Now once you get those updates going, uh, another thing, remember we didn't enter the product ID uh, at first. So this is where you're going to do that. Come down here to your file explorer. Open that up. This PC, right click, come down to properties. Now as you can see on the bottom of this menu, it says Windows is activated. So like I mentioned, sometimes your product key is stored on your motherboard, in which case it will pull it automatically. Um, in that case, it will say Windows is activated, you're good. If it says anything else, Windows is not activated, Windows needs to be activated, uh, that's when you'll click on it. Hit change product ID, and that's where you'll enter in uh, your product ID information. So again, if for whatever reason you don't want to swap out your hard drive, you think it's good, and you just want to make the error stop, I'll show you now how to get into BIOS. So shut the computer down, uh, because we're going to get into BIOS from startup. So now, from your computer being off, 
you're going to hit power to turn your computer on and immediately hold down the F2 key until your bio shows up. So power, immediately hold down F2, and there's your BIOS. Now depending on the year and model of your computer, your BIOS could always look a little different than what you're seeing on my videos. So you may have to poke around for this option. Most likely you're going to want to arrow over or tab over to your advanced option. So unfortunately this option only exists in some older versions of BIOS and this one it doesn't exist and unfortunately I don't have a computer old enough on hand right now to show you so I'll just describe how to get to it. Usually if you have a computer old enough to have this option under the advanced tab you would scroll down to where it says IDE configuration. You would click on that in the next screen, there will be several IDE options. Look for the one that corresponds to your hard drive or your hard disk and select that. Then you would choose to disable it as it's obviously enabled because you're getting the warning. Keep in mind again though, this is only a fix for if you know your hard drive is working and you don't want to see the annoying error because something's wrong and it's showing it to you when it shouldn't be. It's far better to swap out your hard drive and install Windows onto the new one instead of just hoping this error goes away. So if you have any questions or comments, again, check out the frequently asked questions below in the description. Uh, if you don't see yours there, leave me a comment. I get back to you guys a few times a day at least. Um, like and share if this helped you out. And uh, subscribe if you enjoy do-it-yourself computer work. Thanks so much for watching, guys.